Okay, it's 6 a.m. in the morning. My neighbor, who was a little drunk, decided to knock on my door. I was awake. I was just laying in bed with my, my clothes on and all that good stuff. So I came to the door and he was like, smoking. And he's all drunk. And I go, what, what's going on? He says, oh, our other neighbor, he was just talking to me. We were in his van. Yeah. And he said, he thinks that you have the hots for him. I was like, no, disgusting, gross. He doesn't have any teeth. No. He's like reprobate. He goes, okay, I was just, I wasn't jealous or anything, but I was just coming to verify. So anyways, I'm now awake. I'm not mad or anything. Those guys are drunk, you know, they don't know. I don't know what the deal is. But have you ever not known what the deal is? Yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, I went to the courts and I called to get on the calendar because it said something about yeah, you suspended driver's license or something. And I was like, well, I don't really drive. I'm not a driver per se. Uh, I'm just exercising my right to travel. And I already revoked my signature in 2018 when I was taking a political science class. And our teacher from UCLA was teaching us about what are you guys going to do? Like, does it have to get that bad for you to do something? I'm going to challenge you, students. How bad does it have to get before you actually decide to do something? So that's when I was learning about right to travel. And I went to freedomfromgovernment.org and I got my plates and then I bought the book. And the book said, hey, if you have these plates and you hand them a driver's license, if they pull you over, you're basically saying, we got you, you're in our club. So we're going to take your car away we're gonna put you in jail and do all these things whatever due process apparently anyways so i thought well this can be kind of like my silent protest you know because i had heard that picketing out there with fence <laughs> not fences but signs and stuff that's not even a thing that's like we're going to pick at you with a sign. That's almost like my drunk neighbor saying, hey, she's got the huts for me. No, I don't. Not even. No, I don't. So the other guy had to come and verify. Knock, knock, knock. Knocking on my door at six in the morning. I'm just trying to verify. If you have the hots for that guy, <laughs> no, I don't. Weirdos. But okay, so back to I went to court yesterday. I thought, well, maybe the straw man needs a driver's license. I don't know. I see some of my friends getting in trouble because, you know bench warrant thing that's scary to me like gosh maybe I should try to make it right call them up and say hey um maybe the the straw man needs a driver's license because I know I couldn't rent a car you can't rent a car you know why you can't rent a car because it's commercial yeah they're selling or they're renting leasing you a car and if you are not on their team If you're not professionally driving, you ain't going to get a car. 
And then you try to go to the dealership and you don't think that they don't have a contract with the DMV because they do. That's the first thing that they do. They have a contract with the Department of Motor Vehicles and the IRS. Yeah. Like, I don't even think these car dealerships own the cars at all. They don't. It's just like a lot. Like they rent land a lot and then they put up a sign like a church, like we're a church building. Come on, all you peoples. Come on, all you sheeples. We're going to show you about God. Okay. Or these guys in their instance would be like, hey, we got cars for you. Come and get our cars. But they move them around. You know, like at the end of the year, like right now, they had to move those things out or else they're going to get taxed on them. So that's when they have their sales. Come on and get it at the end of the year. So anyways, um, yeah. When to see my dog, that little tail, that was funny. That's a crack up. She's got a little white tail and I can see where she goes. Okay. I just want to shout out to my friend, Wesley. He is the bomb. Oh, and PJ too, of course. Oh, and Robert. And Robert too, Robert Christopher. Thank you guys. And Ray, thank you. I appreciate. Um, and another guy, I think Michael. You guys have been awesome. Very supportive. And I thank you, my brothers. You remind me of the Maccabee brothers. You know, when the Maccabees, those brothers, they're like, hey, we're resting on the Sabbath and they're coming and killing us and they're taking our women and cutting them open and hanging their babies on their neck. Those Maccabee brothers, you know, a long time ago in history, and I read something about the Maccabees. You can look at my channel where I read that. But they said, if we don't do something, when we're resting on the Sabbath day, they're coming and killing us. We got to do something. So that's why they went those Maccabee brothers and they went and got back the temple from the Greeks that were defiling the temple. So anyways, back to yesterday when I went to the courts, I was really thankful. Thank you, Ray. I was so thankful for Wesley told me the best thing to say and I thought maybe maybe I could share that what Wesley told me to say uh where did I write it I took a picture of it and I hand wrote that on a piece of paper really large letters because my phone battery was like gonna die man and I was like, okay, I don't want to be going up there reading my phone. I want to read a piece of paper. I want to get up there. Okay, so on and for the record, I reserve all rights and waive none. I'm here by special appearance. Ooh, I'm a ghost. And <laughs> object to improper jurisdiction chosen. I invoke equity. He told me you could choose common law or equity. I go, I want equity. So I'm going to pick equity. I invoke equity jurisdiction. I do not consent to any adhesion contracts, implied contracts, nor any assumptions or presumptions that I have agreed to enter any such contracts with with this yeah my writing is that bad that i can't even figure it out with this court <laughs> you know how when you're in a hurry and your phone's gonna die and you hurry up and write and scribble and then darn it you can't even read your own writing that's that's me anyways he has me say i am a national 8 usc 1101 a2 and i'm Oops, and I'm an internationally protected person, 18 USC 112C. So let's 
I just want to thank you so much. Send me a picture, Wesley, and we'll see if we can do a portrait of you like I did my friend over there, PJ. Thank you, PJ. You guys are so awesome. Thank you for being like a Boaz. You know what a Boaz is? When you're covering somebody, <laughs> you're covering your brother and your sister. Thank you so much for covering me. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to try to see what I can do to share here. Oh, what was that? 18 USC 112C. 112C. And um, I think we should probably see if we can go there. Let me open this up. Um, it is six in the morning. But you know, I'm fully awake. I wasn't going to do, um, I wasn't going to do a YouTube, but Ray Coel, he says you should do a YouTube. Tell about your story about the, the judge, what happened? Okay, so I guess I'll try to type this at the same time, 18. USC 112. <sighs> Tell you that I have a relationship with that particular judge. I will tell you. The last time, the last time I went to that same court place, I'm telling you, it was weird. That same judge, he was there, right? And then all of a sudden, this curly haired girl, not me, another curly haired girl. You know, a woman, she comes up, switches places with him. I said, that was weird. What are you guys playing? Like musical judge chairs or something? Well, oh, she didn't even tell me what her name was or anything. And then she says, how do you plead? I go, I'm not the defendant. She goes, I'm going to plead for you. You're not guilty. And we're going to move you on to the next place the uh, next month. So then I had to go to another court case anyways. So same, same two people were there today. Mm -hmm. Like this is their thing, you know, that's what they do. But this time the man judge, you know, he's like doing a better, 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 a little auctioneer, huh? Next, next. Everybody is that you either going to be guilty or not guilty. What are you going to be? I'm like, Hey, have an innocent. <laughs> they, they didn't like that. Anyways, I didn't even get to say that word out of my mouth. I was reading that little script thing. And then all of a sudden he goes, get out of here. You're done. And so I called Wesley and Wesley goes, how does it feel to win? I go, really? I got kicked out. That was a win. Like I thought they were going to come and get me or something. He goes, well, they could try to, you know, recontract with you again. You just have to know what to say. So let's learn this 18 U.S. code subsection 112 protection of foreign officials. <gasps> how are you a foreign official? Do you not know? Do you not know that you're a foreign official? Because if U.S. is a corporation, you're foreign. So official guests and internationally protected persons. Let's see who's these three. Protection of foreign officials, official guests, and internationally protected persons. Let's see who these three, you know, I'm a sociologist, so we're going to categorize different groups of people. Let's see who these groups of people are. So read A, whoever assaults, strikes, wounds, imprisons, or offers violence. That's, that doesn't sound good. No, don't like that. To a foreign official official guest or internationally protected person or makes any other violent attack upon the person or liberty of such person or if likely to endanger his person or liberty makes a violent attack upon his official premises private accommodation Ooh. or means of transport oh or attempts to commit any of the foregoing shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than three years or both. Whoever in the commission 
of any such act uses a deadly or dangerous weapon. Ah, who do we know that has those? Or inflicts bodily injury. Yee, I don't want that to happen to me. Shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. B, whoever willfully, oh, intimidates. Ooh, you know what that means, right? When you intimidate somebody and you, I'm gonna try to get my high heels. And I'm going to stab you with my high heels and, you know, I'm going to wear them so that you could be scared, you know, <laughs> intimidates, coerces, you know, forces you, threatens or harasses a foreign official or an official guest <laughs> or obstructs a foreign official in the performance of his duties to attempts to intimidate, coerce, threaten or harass a foreign official or an official guest or obstruct a foreign official in the performance of his duties. Well, let's just wait. Let's go back. Let's find out who are these foreign official people are. Because it sounds like it's some, you know, foreign official. Let's just see for a second. What, who, what, where, when, why? Click on it. Foreign official, let's just see. For the purpose of this section, foreign government. <gasps> Okay, so you're in your mind thinking Russia, China, you know, some foreign government. That's what you're thinking. But if U.S. is a corporation and you're outside of that federal net of that corporation, you're not tied to Washington, D.C. You're a foreigner. That's a foreign government. Governmental, you know, you're governing your mind, government. I'm just saying, you can construe that word. Foreign official, internationally protected person, international organization. <sighs> National of the United States. An official guest shall have the same meanings as those provided in section 1116B of this title. Hey, national. Uh, nation. National of the United States. Nation. Hmm. You know, it means something, folks. It's like those potatoes on the table. Devil's Tower. It means something. What was that? I can't remember that. R Richard Dreyfus. What is that movie? Something about the last kind. It's about UFOs or something. Oh, no. Literally, my neighbor from down the street just drove by. He's looking in my window here. He knows I'm awake because I get the light on. And he just drove by. He's embarrassed. He's like, oh, shoot, that other guy. Went and knocked on her door and told her, blah, 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 that she's got the hots for me. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Anyways, he's all like, you're not from this area. He's like way over down the way, just driving by just now. I'm not afraid of him because, you know, I'm just saying he can't even walk. He's got like a cane, you know, like I could just like, move out of the way and nothing can happen to me i'm just saying but <laughs> you shouldn't be driving if you're drunk you shouldn't be driving i'm just saying that okay so now what is this over here three within the united states hey what do you mean within the united states and within 100 feet of any building or premises in whole or in part owned used or occupied for official business i was kind of at official business at that courthouse or for diplomatic consular or residential purposes by a a foreign government including such use as a mission to an international organization b an international organization c a foreign official or d an official guest Let's just look at this, uh, a foreign government. Did we look at that one already? We looked at foreign official. Let me just look at foreign government for just a second and see what that says. 
For the purposes of this section, foreign government, foreign official, internationally protected person, international organization, national, the United States, and official guest shall have the same meanings as those provided in section 1116B of this title. I could have sworn I just read that same thing. That's probably the same. I probably did read it. All right, so let me see what else. Uh, did we do international organization? Let's see what that says. It sounds like the same, it is the same thing. For the purposes of this section, foreign government, foreign official, internationally protected person, international organization, national, the United States and official guest. What'd they do? Copy paste? Because this is the same thing. Should have the same meanings as those provided in section 1116B of this title. Ah, is that the last three things I've been reading is same, the exact same thing? Is that what you guys see? Because that's what I'm seeing here. Okay. We already read the international organization right there. We've read the foreign official up there. We read the foreign government. So let's see what this official guest is. That guy is driving. Now he's backing up. He better not run over my garden. Oh, whoa. Yeah, you better drive carefully. I'm going to have to shut this little thing because I don't want him looking through my window. Because, you know, Wonder Woman. <laughs> I guess there's other people who wonder too. Other than Wonder Woman. Yeah, there you go. Backed up. That's weird. It's six in the morning, 6 30 now. The heck is with these weirdo weirdo people? Oh, that's right. They all just did fertility worship with their cut off Christmas tree and the semen and the bowls and the phallic expression putting gifts into there. So there's always a lot of weird things going on around this time. I'm telling you that and Easter, you do this fertility stuff and then you get some crazy out there. Yeah, don't do it. Jeremiah 10. Uh-huh. Yeah, it really does mean don't do that read it okay so official guest blah, blah 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 official guests shall have the same meanings as those provided in this title so interesting how it means official guest like that guy out there must be the guest of that other guy <laughs> but hey i'm over here in my international organization i am a national of the united states yeah, and so are you. You're not a U.S. citizen. No, you're not. Oh my God, I hear that guy coming back again. This is really weird. What the heck is this deal? He's coming back again. I can hear him. That's weird. Anywho, uh, congregates with two or more other persons with the intent to violate any other provision of the section shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than six months or both. Ooh, scary. C, for the purpose of the section, which we've read that three or four times now, nothing contained in this section shall be construed or applied so as to abridge the exercise of rights. Hey, D, guaranteed under the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. You know that Constitution of the United States? All those officers and those people who swear the oath to protect whatever, that's them making an oath for all that. It doesn't apply to me. I didn't swear an oath to protect the Constitution, although when I was in the military, I did. But um, okay, so D, nothing contained in this section shall be construed or applied so as to abridge the exercise of rights. Guaranteed under the First Amendment. Okay, goodbye. Bye, Felicia. See you later. Um, okay, so E, if the victim of an offense under subsection A, which is that one way up there, is an internationally protected person outside the United States, the United States may exercise jurisdiction over the offense if, number one, the victim is a representative officer, employee, 
or agent of the United States to an offender is a national of the United States or three, an offender is afterwards found in the United States. As used in this subsection, the United States includes all areas under the jurisdiction of the United States, including any of the places within the provisions of section five and seven of this title and section 465012 of title 49. Oh boy, that's like a mouthful. I mean, you know, it's just covering everything. You know, number one, it was the victim is the representative officer, employee, or agent of the United States. Two, an offender is a national of the United States. Or three, an offender is afterwards found in the United States. <sighs> They're covering all their bases here. You know, uh, let's see, what does it say? F, in the course of enforcement of subsection A and any other sections prohibiting a conspiracy, or attempt to violate subsection A, the attorney general may request assistance from any federal, state, or local agency, including the Army, Navy, Air Force. Where's the Marines? I don't see anything about the Marines here. Army, Navy, Air Force. Ah, you're missing the Marines. Any statute, rule, or regulation, to the contrary, not with standing does that really mean that you don't have standing when you say not with standing that's interesting or regulation to the contrary not with standing that guy did not have standing his knees are all crazy bow-legged and he's drunk and he can't even walk so he's got to drive in his van like if it's a like if it's a wheelchair, back and forth, back and forth. He doesn't have standing because he can't stand on his own. He's using his, or what is it, a van as if it's a wheelchair or something, back and forth. Like that's the, the weird parable. Do you guys ever have weird parables happen to you that's kind of, you know, it's weird. This happens to me. I don't know, maybe it's the sheepskin stuff and I don't eat crickets or nothing, you know, like, John the Baptist or anything, but I'm just saying, why don't I have these parables happening to me? A parable is really a covering, kind of like this jacket hood. You know, this is covering my person, and my person is covering my spirit, and my spirit is attached to my soul, which is inside of this body. A parable is really the covering, the outside sheath. And when you look at this, talks about different places different jurisdictions and even different organizations army navy air force any statute these things are outside rules regulations that's a parable that's like a shell because the spirit of the law is really where it's at, right? And I just want to say thanks so much, Wesley, once again. Wow, that was awesome. You were there for me. And so were the other ones that I uh, was texting. Thank you so much for being there as a support. I really appreciate that. That's what we all need. The spirit of the law is all about loving your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> and that's why I can't really get mad at my neighbors the one down the street and the one over there they just don't know you know they don't have it all going on especially when you're <laughs> using the liquid courage they don't really have it going on so they don't really know you know so the spirit of the law is to you know do unto others like you would want them to do unto you so you know Gotta protect yourself though at the same time. But anyways, I just thought I would share that and I can take off my covering now. Uh, you know, maybe I'll put my covering back on and I'll just get warm and go to bed. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Or hey, you know, this reminds me of that guy from the Matrix. He was wearing his Jesuit robe. 
is covering. Did you know Jesuit, by the way? It means military hiding behind the cloth. Peekaboo. I'm really military, but I'm pretending like I'm a priest, you know? And that's kind of scary. Jesuit doesn't sound good. It makes it sound like they're so holy, but they're military, you know, hiding underneath the cloth. But, you know, I'm just saying, John the Baptist, you know, I, I feel like John the Baptist when I wear this little sheep skinny thing. Okay, it's not really sheepskin. It kind of looks like it. And my customer cracks me up. I wore this to work and um, we we're talking about, it. I said, it's not really sheepskin. It's just like material that looks kind of like it. She goes, yeah, I have the same thing from my dog's bed. And I go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing your dog's bed. <laughs> it was funny. But anyways, I just thought I would share my crazy story about the court case. And thank you so much, Russ Wesley. I really appreciate that. By the way, that judge did not let me finish those sentences. He just kept interrupting me. Are you the person that I go? No, I'm not a person. He goes, get out of here. So I thought I just was like a woman refused and kicked out. But Wesley said, yeah, how does it feel to win? I go, is that what that was? Did I win? He goes, yeah, you didn't have to go to the next court date, right? I go, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I just kind of got scared. Like, are they going to do something to me? I just got to look out and be careful. Just saying. But anyways, as we learn, you know, I almost said as the world turns, but that doesn't happen either. No. And you could really see what people call the shit show. It was so dramatic. When you're in the courthouse, you're feeling like this is Judge Judy's. It's like, where's the camera? Lights, camera, action. I mean, I was recording the whole time. So I had a voice recording of it all. And he's like, yeah, she didn't really show up, did she? I'm like, yeah, really? Because I got it on recording here. I think it did. I did show up, so I'm just saying. <laughs> but anyways, I digress. Okay, so we're done here. I don't know. There you go, Ray. I made a... I made a YouTube. Let's see what people say. Who knows? I just thought I would share my experience and I guess it's a win, but it didn't feel like a win, but I guess it is a win. So that's cool. All right. I'm going to go back to bed. I think <laughs> it's 646 and it looks dark outside. <laughs> All right. I'm probably not going to go back to bed, but anyways. Put some comments down there, I guess. Share your experiences. Okay. Keep a stiff upper lip, people. Because if the good people don't say anything, then we're just allowing evil to overcome us. <laughs>